invest in stocks a beginner's guide for getting started if you are ready to start investing in the stock market but aren't sure of the first steps to take when investing in stocks you've come to the right place it might surprise you to learn that a dollar 10000 investment in the s and p 500 index 50 years ago would be worth nearly dollar 1.2 million today stock investing when done well is among the most effective ways to build long term wealth we are here to teach you how there's quite a bit you should know before you dive in here is a step by step guide to investing money in the stock market to help ensure you're doing it the right way the ways to invest in the stock market individual stocks You can invest in individual stocks if and only if you have the time and desire to thoroughly research and evaluate stocks on an ongoing basis. If this is the case, we 100% encourage you to do so. It is entirely possible for a smart and patient investor to beat the market over time. On the other hand, if things like quarterly earnings reports and moderate mathematical calculations don't sound appealing, There's absolutely nothing wrong with taking a more passive approach. Index funds, in addition to buying individual stocks, you can choose to invest in index funds which track a stock index like the S&P 500. When it comes to actively VS, robo advisors, finally, another option that has exploded in popularity in recent years is the robo advisor. A robo advisor is a brokerage that essentially invests your money on your behalf in a portfolio of index funds that is appropriate for your age, risk tolerance and investing goals. Not only can a robo advisor select your investments, but many will optimize your tax efficiency and make changes over time automatically. To decide how much you will invest in stocks first, Let's talk about the money you shouldn't invest in stock. The stock market is no place for money that you might need within the next 5 years at a minimum. While the stock market will almost certainly rise over the long run, there's simply too much uncertainty in stock prices in the short term. In fact, a drop of 20% in any given year isn't unusual. In 2020, during the COVID-19 pandemic, The market plunged by more than 40% and rebounded to an all-time high within a few months. Emergency fund money you'll need to make your child's next tuition payment, next year's vacation fund money you're socking away for a down payment. Even if you will not be prepared to buy a home for several years asset allocation, now let's talk about what to do with your investable money that is The money you won't likely need within the next 5 years. This is a concept known as asset allocation and a few factors come into play here. Your age is a major consideration and so are your particular risk tolerance and investment objectives. Let's start with your age. The general idea is that as you get older, stocks gradually become a less desirable place to keep your money. If you are young, You have decades ahead of you to ride out any ups and downs in the market. But this isn't the case if you're retired and reliant on your investment income. A quick rule of thumb that can help you establish a ballpark asset allocation. Take your age and subtract it from 110. This is the approximate percentage of your investable money that should be in stocks. This includes mutual funds and ETFs that are stock based. The remainder should be in fixed income investments like bonds or high yield CDS. You can then adjust this ratio up or down depending on your particular risk tolerance. For example, let's say that you are 40 years old. This rule suggests that 70% of your investable money should be in stocks with the other 30% in fixed income. If you're more of a risk taker or are planning to work past a typical retirement age, you may want to shift this ratio in favor of stock. On the other hand, if you don't like big fluctuations in your portfolio, you might want to modify it in the other direction.